want to introduce you uh, because I just feel like I, I just want to. So I remember it was a long time ago, I don't know, seven years ago when I lived in my parents' house. We were in yeah. their church and I went to the class that you taught. And something in my soul was like, I remember her. Mm -hmm. Like I know her. And I like went up to you after class, like, how do we know each other? And it was like, we don't know each other. But it, like our souls knew each other. And yeah. from that moment on, I was just Sarah fan forever. I just love you. You're one of the wisest women I know. And I just am grateful to call you one of my friends. Well, I, I mean, I feel exactly the same way about you. I would have said that exact same thing. And just that it doesn't matter that you've moved and that we only talk to each other sporadically. It just seems like for, for big things, we come back together. Yeah, we do. We do. And this is a big thing today. Your yeah. book has been wanting to come through for a bit. So this feels exciting. We've never done anything around your book together. Mm -mm. So it'll no. be really fun to see what your book um, wants to share with us. There feels like there's something else. Hold on. I can. It's almost like I can feel it when there's like something else that needs to be brought in. What is it? Hmm. I think it's that, like, I literally have no idea what your book is. I have no idea. So we're going to just kind of feel into and let your book show us. And, and, and we're going to drop fully in our hearts mm -hmm. and get out of our minds. And we're going to just see what shows up. We're going to start with my, uh, my beautiful bowl. So I'm going to play the sound. And what it's going to do is it's going to start to just align all of your chakras. It's going to clean the space. It's going to create a beautiful bubble for us. So I want you to take a nice deep breath in. And breathe out, just pouring light through you from the crown of your head all the way down to your toes. Ah. Aligning all the spaces within and most importantly, pulling you right into your heart space. So we're going to bring you right into the heart space. Ah, there we go. And then we're going to start with the sacred creative process. So. I always use smell. You don't have to use smell, but I do. So I want you to just take a deep breath in. And we're going to pour light through the crown of your head. It's going to move through your body and it's going to clean and cleanse any noise out of the body. So anything that wants to figure it out, anything that wants to um, kind of like get in the way, we're just going to clear it all the way out, all the way out through the soles of your feet. Take another breath in. We're going to place this beautiful shield of light around you. And it's like this bubble. And it's just going to pour light through the cells of your body. So I want you to feel that. Feel this beautiful shield of safety, of light. It's pouring in through the cells of your body. <sighs> and then we're going to prep our bodies to receive. So we're going to ask that light will touch our ears, that we will spiritually hear what needs to be heard. The light will touch our third eyes. All of our gifts, our gifts of seeing, hearing, feeling, knowing, will be brought all the way up to the surface so we can have access to them in and through the divine light. We're going to ask that light will cleanse our lips that we speak only what needs to be spoken. So just breathing in and out. <sighs> all right. So now, how are you feeling? Um, just really good and open awesome me too me too so let's call your book in so we're going to invite your book the book the first book because there's a line there's a line that when i said let's call your book in, it was like um like a like a cartoon of like all these books being like brrr, like all the pages <laughs> are being like <laughs> so there's like there's definitely a line of them so we're going to call in the first book the first okay. The first book that you're going to birth. So whatever ones uh, I'm hearing, the first in the birth order. That's what I'm hearing. So we're going to call in the first in the birth order uh, in into the divine light, your book, to come and sit with us. Um, we're going to invite it to come and sit between our hearts. So let's see. How does your book want to come in? Hmm. So I'm seeing a few things. So let me just kind of feel into it for a second. 
there's like something about like wind blowing through your hair like maybe even like like there's like fabric like I don't know if it's like a cape or if it's like this beautiful dress but it's like I can just feel it's almost like flying it's the energy of flying it's the energy of this like ah oh, free fall so it's like okay this is the words like free falling but flying so it's like in the middle of free falling the book is showing us actually you're just flying <laughs> okay i don't know if that makes any sense to you but does that make any sense to you yeah yeah it does yeah yeah so it's it's showing me it's a it's a book of paradox okay so it's like the paradox of like free fall and then like all of a sudden like oh wait actually i'm just flying like it's like um the book is going to be a book with lots of paradoxes in it how does that feel to you uh that feels like my life for the last <laughs> <laughs> decade two decades three decades <laughs> yeah pick a decade yeah yeah okay so that feels pretty accurate so we're just gonna allow your book to come and sit and i place it on an altar between me my heart and your heart so we're just gonna place it right here and we're gonna ask your book to show us um maybe just have it have your book show us a message that's inside of the book so no it doesn't want to share us a message what does it want to share with us it wants to share something so let's see and if you see here or feel anything please let me know <sighs> okay okay so it's showing me it's interesting it's showing me an old-fashioned pen you know like the pens that you would like dip in the ink mm -hmm. and write uh -huh. so it's showing me like um this book has already been penned <laughs> but there's like this lock there's a lock that is preventing you from just opening it up because once you open it up, like it's literally just going to fly through your fingertips because it was already, it's so funny. I've never used the word penned before, but it's like, it's already been penned, which makes it feel like ancient, like makes it feel like old wisdom. Mm. Right? Like you don't like, you don't have to figure it out. The sentence that came in, I was in the shower this morning, mm -hmm. and the sentence that came into my mind, which I haven't thought about it this way, was this. The hill I will die on is the amount of time, energy, and effort that women waste trying to do the impossible, <sighs> which is keep other people happy and do things perfectly. And it just, it felt um, like for the first time I could see that that energy and effort and brain space and worry and anxiety, that's like sacred, like gold that we only have a little bit of. And the way it just like leaks out whenever we try to do these things that we've, we've been told are possible. Yeah. But they're just, they're, they're not, they've never been possible. They've never been our job and we've just, been handed them as our jobs but when you talked about free falling and flying I mean I recently stopped attending the church uh, in which I was raised and it felt for a long time like free falling with nothing I didn't know what would catch me if anything yeah but I discovered that it wasn't free falling it was flying mm. So it feels like this is also the theme that you're talking about with women, right? Like when they let go of the, I'm going to do it all. I'm going to mm -hmm. be a perfectionist at this all. I'm going to make everyone happy. At first, it's going to feel like a free fall. Yes. Because they're going to be like, I don't know where the floor is. I don't know yes. where the ceiling is. Yeah. And it feels terribly. It. it feels terrible. It feels terrible <laughs> at first. Yes. But then they're going to be like, oh my gosh, no, this is actually flying. This is actually flying. This is actually flying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love this. I love this. Okay. So, so we need to find out how to unlock it. Okay. okay. We have to figure out how to unlock the book because I'm being shown that as soon as it's unlocked, I mean, it's interesting. It's the first vision I saw when the when the book showed up. Like all the pages, like brrr, 
you know, like when you just kind of, it's like, yeah, the, the book's just going to be super quick. It's just going to come right through you. But there's, there's like, um, <laughs> there's like a hole that we have to figure out how we get in and unlock this. So let's figure it out. So close your eyes. We're going to drop in. I want you to drop into your body <laughs> and I want you to feel where is where does the energy feel stuck so the way to do that is just start from the crown of your head and you're just going to move through your body <sighs> and then it like you're going to feel a heaviness or a or a, like a stickiness can you feel where it gets stuck feels like it gets stuck somewhere between yeah. here yeah yeah it's like right bing right. yeah and then, right yeah like yeah it's like Chin to solar plexus. Yeah, that's her. <clears throat> so perfect. So now we see, like, now we've found this spot. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, have your book, have your angels <clears throat> come and did we call in our angels? Super weird. I don't think we called in our angels. I don't think so. That's weird. I've never skipped that step. Interesting. <sighs> Okay, so there's a reason. And the reason is, is because we really need to call them in for help with this. So, you know, you've read Think and Grow Rich, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, no, actually. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, Sarah. <laughs> it's, oh, you have to read it. It's the best. Napoleon Hill and Florence Scovel Shin. Like, they are it. They're it. Okay. okay you got to get On it. it. So Napoleon talks about his board of directors and he talks about how he had Abraham Lincoln on his board of directors and right. Like all these people who'd passed, he would call them in every day and he would like give them the problems. Be like, Hey, how do I solve this in business today? And he would listen. So that was the first time I realized like, Oh, why am I not calling in support? Yeah. So this is why we didn't, this is why we didn't call them in in the sacred creative process. Cause we're actually supposed to call some people in. Like you okay. have specific people who are here to help you with this work, the work mm. of liberating women. Okay. Like that's what you're doing. You're like liberating them from generational patterns that have bound them, like bound their feet. That's what mm. I'm hearing. It's, it's bound their feet so that they can't even walk. Mm, I love that. So we're going to feel into this and then we're going to get all woo woo weird on you here, but I'm going to invite you to, Full hearted in here, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so when you drop in your heart, and I want you to just ask, like, who, who is the, per who are the perfect uh, guides and leaders to help you with this? And the first names that come to you, just start saying them out loud. Who are they? <sighs> who would be in the mm. liberating women? Pocahontas was the first one that came to mind. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Pocahontas. Let's bring her in. How about mm. Esther? Esther feels like she's a liberator. Mm, yeah. Right. Like, like I love that Esther, um, like she didn't have any care for like her, like her well being. like of like, uh, like, okay, mm -hmm. I am so committed to liberation like, I'll stand in this place. And she knew she would be safe. So there's a space of, like, calling her in. But then she also, like, takes the other side of, like, helping women not be the martyrs. Mm. Right? Yeah. Like, to not be a martyr. Right? Like, she never was a martyr. She was like, I'm called to do this, and I know I'll be safe. Right? Yeah. So yeah. There, she, like, helps with the martyr energy. So that feels really powerful. Um, who else? Anyone else that comes to you? I've always known that my uh, paternal grandmother was someone who um, has been with me. It's interesting because she would probably more fully typify the woman who needs to be freed. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, 1950s housewife um somewhat of an abusive marriage um yeah she shouldered a lot she, yeah. trying to trying to protect her children 
um, trying to deal with a husband who had gone to fight in a war that that he didn't um, start and came home a completely different man. Um, and then actually my grandfather's mother too. I've, I've only ever heard stories about how she was this like strong, angry woman. And I'm like, yeah, I'd be angry too. If I had to live the life that she lived, I have, I have ancestors who were in polygamous marriages and I've read the stories of like how painful it was for them. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you feel like, and this is me also, I just love that. I don't know if this is your sister who said that I was just thinking about her too. So yeah. That's like a second witness, right? Yeah. But I would imagine that whatever hardships I dealt with on this earth, I would come back to support the missions that would change it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That so feels pretty accurate. Like who better than to yeah. be on this team than those who walked the steps of being bridled, of being bound. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. So we're going to call them in and call, uh, call any, yeah. any of your angels or guides who are here to support your message. And the divine mother is really, really strong for me right now. So we're just going to invite her to come and sit in the circle. I'm, and uh, I want you I'm to I'm wearing feel... a necklace that has Mary on it this morning. <sighs> That's so perfect. That's so perfect. Uh, I love that. I have my necklaces have like super, super deep meaning as well. So that feels mm -hmm. really powerful. So I want you to feel, close your eyes and I want you to feel their presence, that they're like all here and they've all been called in through love, through the divine light, through the highest order of truth and compassion. And we're going to invite them to help us unlock this because holy, <laughs> oh my gosh, Sarah, when we unlock this, oh my gosh, like it's like, it's like when you take the gates back and the bulls get to run out, like that's the energy that's here. It's like all ready to run. We just have mm -hmm. to pull the gates back. That's exciting. That's oh, I like that energy. Okay. So let's, let's ask that we'll be shown how to unlock the <sighs> lock that's holding this book tight. Thank you for being here with us in this beautiful sacred book channeling session and if you felt the stir in your heart that it is time for you to write your book then i am so excited to tell you that i am going to give you my sacred creative process that allows authors to channel their books just click the link below in the description and you will have immediate access to learning the tools on how you will channel your book <sighs> okay, so this is this is getting real um, visually. Okay, this is very visual. So I need you to just keep your eyes closed and watch this. So I want you to see what I'm seeing, which is like the Divine Mother has, she has this golden nectar that I always work with. It's a nectar that mm -hmm. just, it's nourishing, it's enhancing, it expedites, it, it makes you whole, but it's like, because it's the deepest form of a nurturing love, like the deepest form of a mother's love. Like that's the, that's the nectar. So what I'm seeing is like she pours it through and it's like a golden ribbon that pours through every angel guide leader that's on your board of directors. Like it's like pours through and as it pours through, it wakes up all of their love. So we're like, it's like so much love, so much love, so much love. It just gets bigger and bigger, like a snowball. <clears throat> and then the love is going to come back through into your heart. And we're going to let this, like, you are so supported. You do not have to do this on your own. You do not have to figure this out. <clears throat> at any point, at any time that you feel blocked, you just drop in here with this team. And you ask them to help you get out of your mind and into your heart. That is their mission with you. Their mission is to drop you out of the mind and get into the heart. Get into the heart, get into the heart, because the heart is the place that unlocks it. Oh, that's the key. So the reason why it's been locked is because the book can only come straight from the heart. And so the mind, because you are literally one of the smartest humans I know, 
which is awesome and rad, but the mind is going to, it's going to lock you. So mm. your team here is going to help you stay in your heart. And if you can stay in the heart, the book will fly out with mass intensity, with speed and profound energy for you. Interesting. They're telling you that your book is going to give you energy if you write it from your heart. Mm. That's super magical. How does that feel? Yeah. Um, accurate. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Wow. So now there's like, um, who is it? So there's, there's, you know, Isis, do you know the goddess mm -hmm. Isis? Yes. Mm -hmm. So she's very, like, very um, no nonsense. Like, whenever I work with Isis, it's like, let's go. Like, yeah. Like she, she's like, let's get stuff done. That's kind yeah. of her energy. And I, I just felt her really present. And she was like this. <laughs> okay, hold on. It's, <laughs> it's always like makes me giggle to, to bring this through. <sighs> but she's like this. Like, uh, Sarah, like, no more wasted time. Mm -hmm. Like this comes through now. There are women who are in deep suffering that will be liberated through your book. So it's not an afterthought. It's not a dessert. It's not a like, yeah, this would be lovely. It's like, no, this is like a top priority. Let's bring this to life kind of energy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she don't mess around, so... <laughs> Just, just let her come and sit at your table, right? Like yeah. she'll help you. What are you feeling? What are you feeling? So, um, I have a sister-in-law who uh, does archetype readings, and she did one for me for my birthday. And my present archetype is the destroyer. Mm. And it, at first, when I saw that card, it, it. I mean, it feels like such a violent thing to destroy. But the other thing that I'm feeling, and, and maybe it's since that time and it's just connecting to now, is that destruction and creation are like twin processes. Yeah. And they're, they're two sides of maybe the same coin or whatever, yin and yang. Uh, we have a lot of representations for how that might look. But I feel like, like in my mind, I see like things crumbling and mm -hmm. things like coming like that crumbling and rising process and i feel like that's a little of what i'm afraid of yeah. like if there's anything that's fearful for me it's like okay what what crumbles and yeah. the feeling like the just even when something isn't healthy and good but just it's what's you it's just what you know yeah. and it crumbles and something else rises i mean that's still I think that's a little bit of why I feel blocked here is, yeah. is just the unknown of what is crumbling. How do I, how do I show and say that Yeah, and keep my heart? Cause it's the, I, I feel like this is actually the voice part, like the head part. And this is the heart part, the creative. And so that um, the partnership that I'm still really learning to honor between heart and, and head and how I'm so comfortable and good up here. And so, you know, new and vulnerable here. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what kind of where my brain was. I love it. So it's interesting because I felt a lot of Kali energy and I get nervous, like saying that to people like, so I feel like a lot of Kali is here because Kali is the goddess of destruction. Right. Yeah. And, and and the, it's exactly what you're saying, right? Uh, why do I love lava so much? I talk about lava all the time because lava destroys and then lava makes the most fertile soil. Yeah. Anything grows. Like it's like magic what happens yeah. after lava, right? Yeah. So if you are addressing a conversation around a generational cultural pattern that has been here for like, I don't know, eons. Yeah, yeah it's gonna need to be destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> like this isn't yeah. like a, and hey, let's tweak it. Like, yeah, this is a destruction 
of yeah. the old so that the new can be birthed. And there was a thing that came to me. Um, I wish I remembered musical. I mean, I, I, I don't remember any lines from music. Like, I can't even hear it. My kids laugh and make up all the, like, my own words to songs because I don't even know what they're saying, right? But there's a line yeah. in that song by Pink called I Am Here. Have you heard that song before? I'm sure I have, but I'm yeah. terrible with I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to send it to okay. you. Okay. So she says something in it, like, the devils circle at my feet, but I've already been to hell, so, like, I'm not afraid. Yeah. Right? So I would imagine... I'm just, at, you know, imagining mm -hmm. that you've had multiple layers of your life crumble, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Over and over and over. But every single time, what happens? You rise. Yeah. And you rise a new version that's so much stronger, that's so much shinier, right? Like, it's like the phoenix. Mm -hmm. You literally rise every time. So we're just going to remind your body that it, whatever crumbles is only crumbling to serve you. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And if you were to go in and do the sacred creative process and ask to receive, okay, what needs to come through today in this book? And no, it's not going to come through in chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Like it never does. All right? <laughs> like if you were to look at nature, there is no linear creation. Trees are not placed in order. Flowers are not put in the same little color pockets. Like creation's not linear. Yeah. So let's let the book just drop in. And then we put it in a linear way. But right now, that's the only way you're gonna stay out of your brain is if you're just like, hey, what goes in today? And you just bring it through. And it might come from a coaching session that you ran and you are like, oh my gosh, I totally got this new insight. Okay, help me write this so that the person reading the book understands it. Right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because you're getting insights all the time, right? Like that's like your yes. gift. Just boom, yeah. boom, boom. You see, you see, you hear, you hear. So then take the insights and every time you get an insight, just jot it into your notes app. Just into okay. your notes app. And then when you go into your sacred space and you choose to set aside time to receive your book, you take that insight and you open your palms. All right, show me how I bring this through in the book so that it helps, so that it serves, so that this woman over here whose feet are bound, that she is liberated. And every time you go into that space of service, it'll come right through you. That makes so much sense. Oh my gosh, I love your book. <laughs> I love it. So what we're going to do is I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to see that we're just going to unlock the book. We've poured the light through. They've been pouring it through your heart this whole time. We're going to go and unlock the, the, the lock on your book and we're going to open it up and we're going to actually like pour love through this book. And any pieces that have been bound inside of you get broken and that all the words start to just like, it's like they're lifting off the pages. Like they're all becoming freed. And like, I just keep hearing this gets to be easy. This gets to be easy. Okay. You ready? Yeah. 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 It's time for sure. Okay. So let's just see if there's any other messages that need to come through. It feels pretty complete. It's just saying, um, it's just like ready. Like it's just like we begin today. Sound good? Sounds amazing. Um, I just want to show you one quick thing. So my husband and I went to, um, let me see if I can find it easily. My husband and I went to uh, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and we spent the most time on uh, the big island, which is, like, covered in lava everywhere. And at that time, I was fascinated 
I'm trying to find it. I have a, I actually have bought a print of Kali. Oh, really? And she is pouring out lava. What? Like gold. What? What? I tried what? I have all these stacked in my, in the corner. Oh. It, it's going to be just too much to find it right now, but she's pouring out this lava and it's just like gold that's blowing out. And I was just, I was fascinated by, because the stories that on the Hawaiian Island they tell of, of, you know, lava is like destructive and it's creative as well. And I was just fascinated by that. And so I think that's so beautiful. That's what we talked about today. Yeah, you have to send me a picture of that. I yeah. gotta find that. As soon as I find it, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm obsessed. Lava is like, for the last two months, I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell you my little backstory really fast. Then we'll, yeah. I know your time is precious. Uh, I like, you know, I grew up like that I'm like way too much. Yeah. Right? Like everyone's like, you know, my family, my friend, like, woo, Kira's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot to be in Kira's energy because I am. I'm like a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. This is a lot. And I don't really play on any level of um, normalcy. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's why I think we work really well. Like, I don't know how to ever have regular conversation. Uh, I'm always like, so where's your deepest pain? Do you want to talk about your, your book? Let's go. <laughs> right? Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Do I talk about laundry? Like, I have no idea. Right? So I'm like praying and I'm like, God, like, why am I so intense? And I just hear so clearly your lava, your lava and lava is meant to be intense. So it can yeah. change the landscape. Yeah. And then I embraced my intensity. Like, oh my gosh, I can't do what I'm here to do without this. This is meant to be here, right? Uh, so now it's like, this is it. The lava, the destruction that you have to bring through to clear up this pattern. I mean, this is like witness after witness. Like this is part of the path and it's going to create so much fertile growth. Yeah. I... yeah this is really good okay so let's do this we're gonna wrap your book <clears throat> <laughs> where are we how are we gonna wrap it all right so it does not want to be wrapped got it it's very <laughs> clear you will not wrap me so instead we're just going to like we're gonna let it fly so we're, we're just gonna wrap it we're not wrapping it sorry sorry we're going to pour lava love into your book and then we're going to allow it to be free to fly and we're going to invite it to come and spend time with you every day to be in conversation with you we're going to invite your board of directors that we called in to come and be with you every day and um, then we're just going to pour so much love over you as you bring this through that you really your nervous system is super nourished and taken care of when you when you bring this through do you have a drum um, in another room. Yeah. Sure. Do me get okay. it? No, but I want you to drum. So when you're done, so I talk all the time about how to enter into the flow state, which is the sacred creative process, call on your angels, prep your body. But when you're doing a book of this manner, like you're going to be in fire, lava energy, when you're channeling this through, you have to have an exit out of channeling. Okay. So that's when you're going to drum your body. Mm -hmm. And you do some breath work, maybe some, you know, deep holdings of the breath, five in, five out, five times. And let that be your exit out. Because imagine if you were hanging out with Kali, if you were in the lava energy, and then you didn't have an exit out, and you go in and you start taking care of your kids, it's <laughs> probably not going to go well. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so entrance into channeling, exit out of channeling. Okay? Yeah. That feels good. All right, Sarah, anything else you want to share before we complete? Um, no. I feel like this has been the putting together of a puzzle of, like, pieces that I've been gathering for, like, three years. Yeah. It's time. <laughs> I'm so excited, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was the best part of my day. Thank you. Thank you for jumping in.
If you loved this video, then I invite you to come over with me right here and watch a few more of my book channeling sessions. Join me as I sit with authors and we channel through books that are here to transform humanity. I think you're going to love them.